letters one jar. That's me corresponding between two jars. One in one place and the other in another place. Where this happened when if the case was uh, in blue involved two places with long distance. And one part is one city and the other in the other city. Some t- somebody claim against somebody who is in other city. And they cannot, the judge cannot put them all in the same place. So here, judge, there are some uh, arrangement in Islam, the Islamic system, to make it easier for people. Especially, you know, in the past, not like these days. People, when they travel, they need how many? Sometimes maybe travel for months. Like you are traveling for, from Mecca to Medina, you stay days. Huh? It's not an easy. So before, this is something which will make it easy. Right. A judge may send a letter for another judge, if necessary. For example, a person may be living in another town other than his, and he has right that he cannot uh, substantiate. Uh, substantiate or claim except in front of a judge of his town. In this case, the judge of the town where he lives is allowed to send a letter to that of the other town to complete legal procedure. He will send the claim to the other judge and the other judge in the other city will call huh, another person to finish the of procedure. That is because it may be difficult for witnesses to trouble. Besides, they may be known concerning their uprightness in town, but not in the other. There's another reason. Another reason. Maybe those are known in their town, but if they travel to the other town, and the judge may reject their testimony. Why be say, we don't know you. Yeah? Is there anybody who can testify that you are Adil, Hudul, but they are strangers in the town. Nobody will testify for their, for them. Nah. Right. <coughs> Due to the above, it would be difficult to assassinate uh, one's right or claim without letter sent from judge to another. Muslim scholars uniformly agree, often accepting the letter sent from judge to another uh, for providing, for proving and establishing rights. In this connect, connection, uh, Prophet Suleiman, Nabi Suleiman salam, sent a letter to Balqis. Now he, they took this, uh, they took this, uh, which is mentioned in Surah, huh? Surah al Naml, as the lead, as proof for this case. Uh, sent a letter to and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam also sent a letter to whom? To okay. Al-Najashi. Al-Najashi, the king of Abyssinia. Right. And others. Right. Uh, he alayhi wasallam used to send letters to Muslim governors in Islamic countries uh, as the country related to many hadith. All the above prove the legality of sending letters among judges for proving rights and the like. It is worth mentioning also here that the letter sent from judge to another is acceptable when related to people's rights and is unacceptable in cases uh, the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Limits? Huh? Because this is something which is different. But here it was, the matter was facilitated for what? Huh? It was facilitated for one reason, to help people get their their rights. Right. Let's move to the next uh, point. The letter sent by judge to another judge is one of the two types. The first type, the letter sent by judge, including judgment of his to be affected by his uh, counterpart. Right. In one court, one town, the court make or made decision. So, he sent the letter to the other court, the other city, to apply the ruling. So this is the type here. Now, to, you know, take the, an action based on the 
ruling which was made by by that judge. It is stipulated, however, that the distance between the two judges is equal uh, to or more than distance that entails shortening prayer. It's not shorter than this. Masafa to Asr. And most, <coughs> many of the rules in Islam related to trouble always, you know, based on Masafa to Asr. Masafa, that means the distance when it is allowed for a person to shorten his, his prayer. Uh, that is because it is an act of transferring written testimony to the receiver. It is impermissible when the distance between the sending judge and the receiving one is closed. So this is one of the conditions. That means the distance should be. Why? Because uh, the, as we said, the reason, the wisdom is to make it easy for people. If it was not uh, a distance which is sort of prayer, that means it is very very short and people they can take this in account. Furthermore, it is permissible for judges to send a letter to an unspecified judge. Uh, the wording may be as follow. Maybe write like you know the following statement. To whomever receive my letter. And this is an answer because some people they said okay uh, is it only for judge that you know? Here the ruling said, no, it's not necessary that you know. The judge, but he will send the letter to somebody who has authority. Who has authority of ruling. Right? And he doesn't know his name. Uh, to whom receive my letter of the Muslim judge. Without specifying uh, any certain person. So whatever judge receives such letter, has to accept it since it is sent from a judge to another judge. You should not say, no, no, this was not sent for me. It was not sent to me. You see how Islam make it what easy for people to get their rights. To close, you know, close all ties of huh, argument or differences. And not to make it very long procedure. Try to make it short because the goal is what? That everyone should take his, his right. Thus, it is the same as the case when the letter is sent to a certain thing. There are two views concerning the acceptability of the letter sent to another judge. Right. We have here two views. When we say we have two views that the ulama are, have what? Have differences regarding this issue. Right. The first view is that the judge must call two upright witnesses to testify to it. Those two witnesses are to define its meaning and the ruling related to what it includes. The second view is that it is permissible to an act open letter sent from judge to another when the receiving one knows the handwriting of the sending judge. You get the point now? Yeah. Yeah. Now, nah, because some of the judge, he said, maybe he misunderstand the letter. The message reached him. But he want to make sure that he understood the message correctly because it's related to rights of other people. It is a matter of judgment, right or not? So in case that he has problem with reading the handwriting or something it's not clear for him, so here it's enough for him to call two upright Muslim men to read it and give them his, you know, their feedback. But if it was clear, then there's no need for this. Then he should act upon his, his understanding. This is one view reported by, uh, adopted by Ali Mahmoud. I think there is all, all uh, explaining for this point, which is. Go and move to the next uh, page. To accept testifying to testimony, there are many conditions that must be fulfilled. What are the conditions to accept the testimony? First, the original witness must give permission to the second witness to testify to his testimony. 
since testifying to one testimony means representation that uh, is it be done only with one's permission. Second, testifying to a testimony must be in the cases where it is permissible that judge sends to another uh, as mentioned before. Namely, in cases where people's rights uh, rather than the right which is uh, prescribed punishment which is hulud, uh, you know, mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet. Right. When the testimony of the original witnesses is unattainable because of his death, illness, absence, in a place far away, fear uh, of ruler or the like. So this is also other condition. The circumstances hindering the testimony of the original witness continue until giving the judgment. You know, all this to keep and protect the right of whom? Of witnesses also. See? In this case, the witnesses also, if he cannot uh, go, then the one who has the right, he should accept, first of all, uh, the one who testify, and at the same time, maybe those who cannot, because there's maybe some harm will be caused if they trouble you know, to the other uh, judge type. The representative witness must declare the identity of the original witness on whose behalf is assuming the responsibility to testify. You see, this one witness, he asked somebody to carry his testimony. You get the point now? One witness, he cannot trouble. He cannot trouble to give his testimony. So what can he do? He assigns somebody else in that town to be have an act in his in his behalf. Is this clear? So this is the whole condition. As it said. But as for the ruling on taking back one's testimony, what does it mean taking back one's testimony? Somebody or they make judgment and then he went to return, to cancel it. They are as follows. If they witnesses, if they witnesses, uh, in cases pertaining to financial affairs, take back their testimony. The judge does not become null since it has been already issued. Alas. Yeah. He gave it, he gave the judgment, then no, no way back to say I change my my mind. Why? Because the judge already what he did? Huh? He issued his judgment because based on what? On their testimony. However, the witnesses are accused of trying to nullify the judgment. So the judgment is to take effect and the witnesses are to be fined the equivalent of what they testify to. So in case they change, then okay, then you are the one who caused this harm to this person. Therefore they will pay off because they are the one who made this harm. So they unlawfully deprived. The second one, if the judge gives the judgment according to the testimony of witnesses and an oath taken by the plaintiff, and the witness take back his testimony, the witness is to guarantee the whole property in dispute. Why? Because he gave his testimony from the beginning. If you are not sure, why you say it? Now, and this also to teach people to be what? Fair when they give their uh, testimony. Um, and the witness take back his testimony. The witness is to guarantee the whole property in dispute for the whole claim is based on his testimony. Moreover, the oath is to be taken by the plaintiff, and it is not necessarily acceptable against the other party as proof since it is only one of the conditions for giving the judgment. Now, because the wise will say, to give the judgment we need two things. The witness and 
the oath, right? So if the one who gives testimony, he wants back. Then the oath here is not valid. Why? Because it's not supported. Right. If the witnesses take back their testimonies before the judgment is issued. Now this is another case. The judgment is to be cancelled and the witnesses are not accountable. Why? Because no harm happened here, right or not? No harm happened here. But still, the judgment was not issued. But after it was issued, maybe action was taken. And some of this action you cannot get it back. Or you cannot cancel it. So for the, the, the Muslims that are not accountable for guarantee any things and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam. And here we we stop inshallah today. We have time. About five minutes. So inshallah we'll go to the salah early today. Uh, we'll go inshallah next week in chapter 9 which is oats in clay. Right? I think we have only uh, two two more chapters inshallah. I hope uh, we can finish it inshallah next week. Any question? Ma'am? Ma'am, suggestion? Yes, sir. Just, Alhamdulillah, we completed two books. Alhamdulillah. We should have some get together. Ma'am? We'll do some money and then we'll have some. Like this one time we had? Yes, I remember, yeah. Mm-hmm. After we finish Arabic class or what? Yeah, after this. No. So celebrate to celebrate that we finish this book, which is of two volumes, and it's a very, very comprehensive book, as you notice. Know.